Oh, we've actually got a small black tip reef shark right down the bottom there. Very deep. But uh, he's small and also swimming quite fast with a pointier nose. He's just kind of doing some circles right down the bottom there. There's a few trevally there with him as well. They're obviously, uh, they know their size. Not scared of him right now, that's for sure. He's only small. <laughs> So uh, to give you guys a bit of an idea just how uh, much you don't want your fingers in their mouth, we did go fishing. Three. We have had our three days off. Three. And uh, where's Agro? It's usually the most impressive. This is Agro, isn't it? This is Bruce here, much darker colour. <laughs> Bruce. Bruce. Here's Agro. He comes straight up when he feels the fish. So you can see we've got a couple of sharks fighting over it there and they're all going down. Straight down to the bottom there. So uh, they do a bit of a lady in the tramp thing sometimes where if two sharks get a hot suck onto the same fish, they'll basically suck that. They, they pull Lift the shreds and everyone's happy. Yeah, they'll, uh, they'll probably all be back up very shortly after they've all stopped mucking around with that one. <laughs> How deep is it here? Well, it varies by about 10 metres. Um, and at a dead low tide, we've got 15 metres yeah. of water. So right now, we've probably got about 23-ish metres of water underneath us. So they've got a fair bit of room, that's for sure. Now while they're sitting here as well, okay. staying still, now that we've only yeah, got okay. a couple of sharks, it's a bit easier to see those muscles there. So as well as that powerful vacuum, what they can use those muscles to do is both pull the water in and also reversing the process to spit things back out again. We've got a couple cuts up to come around now. So while they're doing that, these guys, you might notice they're sitting still. Now most sharks have to rely on their forward momentum through the water to keep the water passing over their gills. These guys, however, don't have to constantly move forward. And that's because what they can do is use that powerful vacuum there to pull the water into yeah, their mouth. Blow it out through the gills. Yeah. What they're going to do is then pull that water in and they're going to clap that mouth shut as they blow that water out their gills. So you'll see this guy here is just gently clapping that mouth open and shut there. Is the group like, is that a family group or...? Yeah, yeah, they actually refer to a group of tawny nurse sharks as a family as well, which is uh, quite coincidental. Um, so, uh, yeah, these guys all hang around together and uh, basically follow the setup. So we uh, actually were just come out, out of our cyclone anchorage down Cyclone Creek there, and uh, these guys have all followed us straight out here as well. <laughs> all sticking nice and close by. Mm. <coughs> what are they eating? This is barramundi. Barramundi. Yeah. Like yeah. barramundi. So uh, with that powerful vacuum as well, just as powerful. Yeah. Oh, look at the little one. Oh, oh. oh. just pushing the <coughs> ground. Draw like that. You missed it. You missed it. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Agro straight back up again, like one more. <laughs> so you can see they're pretty well just like a golden retriever if anyone's got one of those at home in that they just don't stop eating stuff. It doesn't matter how much or you swimming. feed them, these guys will always come back for more, that's for sure. Yes, yes. Or a so these or... guys having anywhere from 26 to 32 teeth across that mouth. With those 26 to 32, they have four rows that make their way further back into their mouth. Top and bottom adding up to about 200 to 250 odd teeth in there. Now as well as that, they've got two more rows in each gum. So if they do bust any of those teeth off, what they can do is simply roll the next set of teeth forward, replacing any broken ones. So they've got definitely their fair share of chompers, that's for sure. Down in the bottom of this drum here, uh, I do have one more fish carcass there, but that's for later. Um, there's also a few 10 cent 
uh, kind of sized holes, quite a few of them drilled in the bottom. That's kind of imitating how these guys are naturally going to feed. So usually what they're going to do is they're going to use that nice flat nose there. They're going to make their way along the ocean floor. Now as they do so, with those receptors there dangling off, they're going to leave them just off the bottom. As they do so, they're going to be feeling for any small crabs, crustaceans, squid, small fish, pretty well anything they find down there. When they do feel that vibration off those uh, animals, what they then do, activate that powerful vacuum there, pulling them into their mouth. Mm. Now with mm. that, many little crabs and crustaceans, what they're going to be trying to do is slide back into their little hole, nook, cranial crevice. Yes. Now with that powerful vacuum, allowing these yes. guys to suck them out of that area. Now, while well, we probably won't notice it today, but what the being in the form of those juvenile gold for valley, those bright yes. little fish, and also yeah. quite a few remora underneath his belly there. Whoa! <laughs> you can really see the size difference of aggro here. Aggro's up around a three metre mark now. He's definitely very big, that's for sure. And uh, with that, the largest tawny nurse shark ever recorded oh, was measured at 3.2. So just a little bit longer than him with the average size, usually for a fully grown adult, being about two and a half metres. Agro is definitely very big and uh, pretty well as big as we're ever going to get. They don't exactly fill out a census and uh, write down the length, but we think agro could well be the largest living tawny nurse shark there is. You can see with that fish nice and smelly, once that pours into the water these guys go crazy for it. <laughs> <laughs>